the Japanese constitution declares. The Japanese people forever renounces war as a sovereign right. Land, sea and air forces, as well as other war potential, will never be maintained. Today, Japan has the world's fourth largest military budget, with 260,000 men in its self-defense forces. September the 27th, 1945. Three weeks after the Japanese capitulation, the most important encounter of the post-war period takes place at the American Embassy in Tokyo. All eyes focus on the Emperor's responsibility in the war. MacArthur is thinking, I need this man to rule Japan. He's an empty vessel. MacArthur said, basically, I can empty out this vessel and put in some democracy, put in some of the reforms we want to do. MacArthur protects the emperor and deprives him of his power in the new constitution. Article 9 forbids Japan to wage war. You keep your emperor, you keep Hirohito, he's stripped of powers. The trade-off is you accept Article 9 and these rights. But the outbreak of the Korean War in 1950 reverses the situation. The United States rearm their Japanese ally for the Cold War. Japan begins its incredible economic recovery and rebuilds a military force in spite of Article 9. When the Emperor dies in 1989, at the end of the Cold War, nationalism regains strength and tensions grow with China and Korea about Japanese war crimes. The war has not yet come to an end. The 9条から日本の戦後史全てが見えてくる。